they did it originally to try and get answers to these tunnels, to try and find out what it was all about. Turns out that all the tunnels have done is raise more questions than they've actually answered. Hello, welcome back to another video. So today, me and Connor, Kerbex UK, we're here in Liverpool, and behind us is the remains of Joseph Williamson's house. Now, Joseph Williamson dug an extensive set of tunnels underneath the streets of Liverpool, and we've been invited down today to have a guided tour around these tunnels. Now, allow me to explain. Joseph Williamson was a very, very wealthy man. He lived between 1769 and 1840. He amassed a fortune as a tobacco merchant. Now he was a bit of an eccentric character because he was described between being rough and uncouth and very kind and considerate. But he was certainly a philanthropist. He had an interest in the plight of the working class and the poor. Now around the early 1800s there were lots of men returning back home to Liverpool that were coming home from the Napoleonic Wars and they were out of work, poor and destitute. What he did was he exploited an area of Liverpool that was at the time quite rural. If you look at this map of Liverpool you'll see this area here, the pink area, was on higher ground. Now where the lower ground met the higher ground there were quarries, uh, sandstone quarries and he bought land around those quarries and what he did was he employed men to vault over the areas of the quarry and also tunnel into the hillside. He was nicknamed the Mole of Edge Hill um, and as far as we know these tunnels and this vaulting of the quarries, bricking over, creating arches, was for no other reason other than to give these men work. And also it was kind of skill sharing because there was other men there that were brickies and craftsmen and they taught, they shared the skills basically. And so what we've got today is this extensive labyrinth of tunnels under the streets of Liverpool. As Liverpool's expanded, these tunnels now find themselves underneath the streets. Now me and Connor were invited along by the friends of the Williamson Tunnels to take a look at the work they were doing and the work is ongoing. It's just a small group of volunteers who from 1996 have been excavating these tunnels by hand, literally. What they've uncovered is absolutely fascinating. So the tunnels are quite extensive. We're going to go initially to the Paddington site and our guide, Mike, is going to take us into the tunnels and show us what it's like in there. Difficult place to film in, uh, obviously I'm a bit of an amateur so I've not got a whole film crew and loads of lights. So some of the shots are a little bit dark. Bear with it because I do get my light out eventually and light the scenes. Let's go to the Paddington site and see what Mike has to tell us. So we've just come round the corner now from Joseph Williamson's house. This site is called the Paddington site and it's well hidden, you wouldn't think it was here. Mike is going to tell us a little bit about the place that we're going to enter now. So what is this Mike? What's this bit we're going to see now? Right, the Paddington site um, used to be a quarry. Um, when Joseph Williamson developed this land, he vaulted over um, the quarry uh, to various levels to get this basically up to ground level so he could develop properties above. Um, but this forms part of the network of the Williamson Tunnels um, underneath this whole area. So this was kind of rural? Yeah, uh, this was like countryside basically in Williamson's day. Um, he built his house over on uh, Mason Street. Which, which we've which just seen. Just been, yeah, we've yeah. just seen. Um, and he basically just developed this you know, as, as the city expanded. 
right fantastic so what we're about to walk into you'd walk past and you wouldn't think anything of it but come and look at this Right, Joseph Williamson was born in 1769. Um, he came to Liverpool at the age of nine years old and he worked for a, a firm called Tate, which was a tobacco merchant. He worked his way up through the company. Um, he ended up marrying the boss's daughter and he eventually inherited the business of, of his father-in-law. And that's where he got his huge, vast wealth. This area of Liverpool was countryside and he developed his house over on Mason Street, which part of which was a former quarry. And he vaulted over this quarry um, to have terrace gardens and things. He also then bought this land or used this land uh, to develop uh, again for, for property. Um, this again was a, a former quarry, which he vaulted over. Um, so this area is kind of like a cellar system rather than tunnels in the Paddington section. The tunnels started when um, Williamson um, basically recruited and employed soldiers coming back from the Napoleonic Wars. They were out of work and rather than just giving them handouts, he paid them to do a day's work. So one day he paid them to dig a hole, the next day he paid them to, to fill that hole in quite where the whole tunneling thing came from we don't know because it seems like a strange kind of thing to get involved with you know, you'd rather employ people to actually build things rather than dig all these this network of tunnels underneath the, the city uh, but that's what he did and that carried on till about 1840 uh, when Joseph Williamson died and that's when the tunnels basically uh, were forgotten about and started to be, become get filled in and basically become an urban legend really. So we're going further down now? Yeah, we're going down to what we call the Marlong, which is where we think um, the historical society walked unhindered for a mile. Oh, and right. This is like the, f the first level of where we're going. We're actually going to go down to the deepest level four. That's what's called the mile long. The mile long, yeah. But just to obviously make you aware, everything you're about to see has been done out by hand. So this was essentially a dump, was it? People had dumped yeah, it stuff was, in it. It was just literally a dumping ground because people sort of, there's a hole, hole there underneath the property, just throw rubbish down there and you right, know, it yeah. basically, they were all filled on into like the ceiling height. Okay. Yeah, everything's yeah. come out by hand. Um, 1,800 tonnes worth we've calculated that actually came out of this site and it took us four years. Four years, oh my God, <laughs> fantastic. Anyway, let's go and take a look. Yeah, these are all found here. Look at that. Take it, was that like to, to shift stuff up? That would have been originally a coal hole for the property above, so. Oh, uh, was it? Um, yeah, so that would have gone up to street level and that would have been used by the household of the, the property above us. So where was the coal though? The coal came down here? It had been dropped into this. So we're in, a, we're in somebody's former coal bunker as well? Yeah, this would have been used as part of the cellar of, of, of the property above. So um, they, they actually made use of the tunnels later? Yeah, uh, because uh, the properties were a mixture of residential and commercial. There was a baker's, there was a bottling plant, um, there was a chemist. So they actually used these as, as cellars as part of the business. Right, so we're in the Marlong, um, and as you can see, we've got sandstone either side. So this would have been originally part of the quarry. And what they've done is they've actually vaulted this over to make it used as a cellar as part of the properties above. They weren't skilled brickies when they did this? Originally they weren't. Um, we've got no real record of sort of what skills they had. We, in fact, we, we haven't really got any record of you know who they actually yeah, who they were. were. Yeah. Um, all we do know is that they came here to learn a skill. So whether or not there were actually any proper skilled people showing them how to do the work. It could have been like sharing the skills, couldn't it? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Possibly. And everything behind there is 
what you've found. This is just a small sample of what we've actually found down here. Um, basically, a lot of it was just discarded when people were throwing things on, you know, just treating it as a, a, a dumping ground. So these marks that we're looking at were made by the guys that were down here. Yeah. So just to show you what a labyrinth we're in and just how much is yet unexplored in this place, behind that wall there, the tunnel carries on apparently, and that is yet to be explored. And then Mike says there's a tunnel going that way as well through the gap in the uh, wall there. You just see the arch there. Yeah, see this, this thing here, this arch. So that will be phase two, and they've yet to go and explore all that. So what they've done already is incredible, and there's more besides. This really is an unbelievable subterranean archaeological enigma. <laughs> there's a lot more than just those pockets yeah. there. Yeah, as you'll find out. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, this is more stuff you found. <laughs> Just a small sample. Yeah. Chamber pots. Look at that. Is that a hospital bed pan or something? It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, the old bottles there. Yeah, a lot of these come from the bottling plant that was above. So you can see, they're all also known as Ollie bottles. Oh, they've got so a little got thing, the, you push the marble in the top, did you? Yeah, so that would create a seal, it's like an early form of stopper. Yeah, yeah. Can you turn it on its side? Or to, yeah. So you can yeah. just... Yeah. Oh, and then the, the little marble went into it, didn't it? Yeah. We used wow. to find all of these broken because obviously children use, use them what to get the marble marbles, out of them, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so this is like our favourite cup. Um, it's to commemorate the coronation of Edward VII and it doesn't look very special at all until um, I lift it up and you can see the man himself. Can you see that? Oh, he's in the bottom. So that's it, I've got it. So he's actually kind of watermarked into the bottom of the cup. Yeah, it's just the thickness of the china at the bottom um, because if you look in the cup normally you just can't, you can't see it but it's only when you shine the light. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. There's a grate on the floor here. Eh? And I can't even see how far it goes down. This really is an archive of treasure. And it's unbelievable to think that these finds that we hold so dear today, the Victorians and the Edwardians so casually cast them aside into a hole, into a cellar of those buildings that were about to be pulled down and as far as they were concerned, to be never seen again. Mike has a theory as to why so much of these treasures are in one piece and have been preserved so well. You, you were saying, so I was thinking it was like domestic ash and that, but you think it's... Um... We think a lot of it uh, came from the production of town gas. Town so, gas, we know about that, don't we, yeah. off my videos, yeah. yeah. Um, so we think it was a byproduct of that, and basically they got permission to dump a lot of that down here, which um, actually helped preserve a lot of the finds that we've actually Did it? We found, because, you know, it's quite soft. Um, so it preserved like, you know, you can see like a lot of the pottery and the glass yeah, that yeah. we found. So the softness of the ash buffeted the pots like it's saying. Basically, yeah. Wow, wow. It's just unbelievable, isn't it, that, it, that this place was so unvalued in the late sort of 19th century mm -hmm. that they've just, they just put ash down yeah. there basically. And all the pots and the unbelievable finds that they've got down here was just buried forever. And it's just down to these people that it's all been uncovered. Mike, what is this you're showing us now? 
Right, so in, back in, I think it was 1998, when we actually found our way back into the tools, um, we actually broke through in this little, little hole here. Um, but there was only a crawl space. The tools were filled in that much that we can only crawl on your, on your belly, basically, um, around here. This is how the tools used to look like when we first found them, um, before we actually cleared them out. So the view that you've got this photo is the view that you've got of this tool. So that, right. that's filled before. up there, is now that yeah. that you dug out. That's right. Well. These are some pictures that Mike sent me taken a few years ago and this is what they had to contend with and this is that ash that he's talking about that contained all those antique finds that are now on display but this is basically what they were faced with. Some of these tunnels, these chambers you'll see in part two, some are in this part one but this is what they dug out by hand by buckets and shovels. So Mike is also showing me these hooks that you can see on the wall here and it just illustrates, apparently there was a bakery above here and we think the hooks are in the ceiling just to hang things on, just storage of meat, storage of meat maybe for the pies and things like that. Um, but it just shows how the tunnels were used later by anyone that was just above them. They just found a use for them, whether it would be a coal dump or somewhere to hang meat. But um, amazing to think what's been on that hook. So above me is a piece of brilliant brickwork called a bishop's mitre and apparently it was a common theme down here these these this sort of arrangement pointed to where there was going to be a tunnel now if you look ahead the mitre is pointing there towards uh, bedrock so what we think is even though there's no tunnel there possibly an intended tunnel there oh. <laughs> There as well. oh, that's beautiful. That's incredible, isn't it? So in this vast labyrinth, the next section where you'll see us filming and talking is in that chamber there. Oh, no, that's right. So in that chamber, in the sort of buttresses inside the chamber, two curious holes high up on the wall. So those buttresses are hollow. Two vents in them, designed to bring fresh air in. And what Mike is saying is that one there that we're looking at possibly had a fire in to draw air up. So in Manchester, we've looked at the rock, the sandstone around Castlefield, and we've seen that the outcrops of rock and it looks like it has extended right across to Liverpool because we're on sandstone again. So that ancient, ancient desert from all those millions of years ago obviously spread across the whole area of the northwest of Britain. I mean, I'm just blown away by that, the fact that we've got the same, the same rock here in Liverpool as we've got over in Manchester and both cities are built on that ancient desert. I think the word is speechless. I'm stood in the equivalent of like a cathedral. It's just incredible. 
Okay, so this is the lowest level. This is level four of the Williamson tunnels. We're about 60 feet underground from, from street level. And this chamber that we're in, this vast chamber, is about 40 feet from the bedrock where I'm standing up to the vaulted ceilings above. Can you imagine the volume of, of spoil and earth and waste and rubbish that was in here? That again, like I keep saying, has been dug out by hand by buckets by the volunteers here all volunteers and they've done it they did it originally to try and get answers to these tunnels to try and find out what it was all about turns out that all the tunnels have done is raise more questions than they've actually answered personally i can't video or photograph this place enough because i'm terrified of missing anything this is an absolute gem and if you ever get yourself near liverpool you need to come and visit this place because it is unbelievable i'm blown away you can tell that mm -hmm. this is an undiscovered gem um, and i keep saying if you come to liverpool you need to come down here and take a look at this place so mike how do we find you? How do, can anyone come down and visit? What, what do we do? Anyone can come and visit. Um, go to our web, website, uh, williamsontunnels.com. Um, there's a booking uh, page on there, so you can actually book a, a visit, uh, normally on a Wednesday or a Sunday. But anyone can come. Um, you know, uh, it's free to actually visit. All we do is ask for people for it to give a donation. At the yeah, end. the donation's well worth it for what you see down here, isn't it? It's the only way we actually sort of fund our, our, our whole operation. So uh, right. we rely on it really. Yeah. So, well, let me get this cleared up. You're the friends of the Williamson Tunnels. There's an official tourist. Um... There's also the Heritage Centre, which is a proper tourist attraction. Um, they have a small section of the tunnels. Um, uh, but we have the main bulk on our side of the, the railway line. Okay, so the, the, what's the distinction between the, web, the two websites? What's your website? Ours is Williamson Tool, is actually on the back, it's WilliamsonTools.com. I'll show that in a second, right. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and you're on Facebook? We're on Facebook as well, so if you go on Facebook and search for the Friends of Williams, Williamson Tunnels. Friends of Williamson yeah. Tunnels, and we'll just show, flash that uh, website up in a bit. You can book, come down here, they'll take you around like we've done, and all they ask is a donation. So, come and support these guys. This, I keep saying it, poof, <laughs> unbelievable. Thank you so much no problem, for showing pleasure. us around. Absolutely. Cheers. Thank Brilliant. you. Thank you. Um, this is Lynn, who actually Hiya. reached out to us and gave me access and arranged us to the visit down here. So Lynn, thanks so much. Well done. For getting us down here. Brilliant. No We're, problem. I keep saying it, we are blown away. Thank right. you to the team all down here. Brilliant. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you for coming. No problem. Excellent. <laughs> So in part two of this fascinating Liverpoolian adventure, we'll be going to the remains of Joseph Williamson's house to see what they've uncovered there. And again, we're going down deep underneath the bedrock of Liverpool to go to the active working face where the volunteers are very, very busy trying to uncover new chambers and new shafts and new features. So stay tuned for part two of the Williamson Tunnels. Mm.